And today astronomers look for this planet, they call it planet X. Uh, they mean maybe the unknown planet, but it's also the tenth planet. They called it Nibiru, which means planet of the crossing, and the ancient symbol was the cross. Not from Christian times, but from 6,000 years ago. And they say that this planet, the 12th member of our solar system, has a very large orbit of 3,600 years, and every 3,600 years it comes between Mars and Jupiter close to us. And it is then they said that people, uh, people that look like us, not uh, <laughs> with little horns or green, uh, people they look, that look like us started to come between their planet and Earth about 450,000 years ago. Why do they look like us? We look like them. Because if you know the Bible, which is based on the Sumerian tales, at some point they engaged in genetic engineering and mixed their genes with the genes of uh, Homo erectus. We can use uh, various uh, uh, scientific terms, but let's say with, with early hominids to bring about Homo sapiens, us. Uh, well, well, where did all this come from? And I think that you need to turn to the ancient Sumerians themselves and listen very carefully to what they have to say because what they have to say, not just in one place, but over and over and over again, is that they were taught civilization by these uh, beings that came from the heavens to the earth. Uh, they call them the Anunnaki. The Sumerians wrote down their history on clay tablets like these, which lay ignored in a Berlin museum for half a century. Few people have been able to decipher this ancient language. But one of them is Zechariah Sitchin. The writings and the pictorial uh, evidence left behind by the Sumerians going back 6,000 years speak and depict uh, people who came from another planet I called Nibiru, and uh, many of the depictions show them uh, much bigger, at least uh, by a third, perhaps more than the average uh, human being, so uh, they were giants. This Sumerian cylinder seal from a Berlin museum is astonishing for several reasons. First, it depicts our solar system with the sun at the center and the planets arrayed around it a fact not known to European science till around 300 years ago. It also shows the planet Pluto, which we didn't discover till 1930. And amazingly, there's another planet, which the Sumerians called Nibiru, and believed that it was from where the Anunnaki, or celestial giants, came from. If you look at the three figures depicted here, they all look more or less the same size. But if you bear in mind that this figure of the deity, that he is seated, and you add from the knee to the hip to his size, you will realize that he is about 10 feet tall, a giant, one of those who from heaven to earth came. Looking for signs of extraterrestrial life, astronomers have searched deeper and deeper into the universe. But all along, maybe they should have been looking closer to home. For it's in our own solar system that a mysterious object has recently been detected, near where the Sumerians placed their planet Nibiru, home of the Anunnaki. For the believers, this is convincing evidence that the celestial giants are real. The ancient Sumerian text, uh, just in a very broad overview, basically tell us that more than 400,000 years ago that these Anunnaki came from space and landed on the earth in the Tigris-Euphrates Valley. They uh, began to set up a colony that they called Eden. 
According to Genesis, Eden, or Eden, is where Adam was created from dust and Eve from one of his ribs. Others, however, have a more high-tech version of how human life began. In time, needing manpower, needing workers, uh, jumped the gun on evolution uh, using genetic engineering. And they produced a, a hybrid which uh, eventually became Cro-Magnon or, or modern man. Legend has it that when the Anunnaki came back after several thousand years to see how their genetic handiwork had turned out, they found the Earth females irresistibly attractive. It starts in the Bible. There you can read, in the beginning of Moses, when the sons of the gods saw that the daughter of men were beauty, they took them to wife. Later, out of the body's womb, giants come. So destructive were these titans that the Anunnaki who fathered them decided to destroy them. The apocryphal book of Baruch even tells us how many giants were wiped out. The book of Baruch says, Then the Lord created the great flood, destroyed all life, which then was on earth, including the four 090,000 giants. 50,000 years ago, an advanced race of beings came to Earth. They established a civilization here that became known as Atlantis. Modern humans inherited everything from these alien visitors, according to Sarian. In fact, we are them. They interfered with the indigenous population of this planet. And when I say interfere, I mean genetically, biologically. Alien blood, the idea blows a hole through mainstream theories of human evolution. In northern Kenya, they found the boy, the skeleton of what is believed to be one of our oldest ancestors. By using carbon dating on that skeleton and others, scientists have formed a consensus about when the first humanoids evolved. But something extraordinary happened 30,000 years ago. After millions of years of slow evolution, humans began a rapid advance from cave painters to sophisticated pyramid builders. You don't have pyramids, and you don't have basket weaving, and you don't have metallurgy, and you don't have all of these anomalies just popping out of the blue. We have whole mathematical concepts with no antecedent you know, stages, which we know must have existed. This knowledge could only come from alien visitors, says Zarian. And it was bestowed upon the citizens of Atlantis, transforming the island into the intellectual beacon of the pre-ancient world. It's bigger than Rome, it's bigger than Egypt, it's bigger than uh, Greece. You know, Atlantis is bigger even than our own cyber age, actually. Because the further we get away from it in time, there it looms on the road ahead of us again. Sarian is convinced there were some 500 alien visitations during the time of Atlantis. And because of the spectacular nature of these encounters, there is evidence if you know where to look. In uh, the coffin texts of the Egyptians, we hear about crafts that come and pick up princesses and fly them to foreign shores in an instant. We have uh, the Laura Caves in India where you can actually go and look at them these wall reliefs where it literally shows you crafts with little people inside them, the gods, above the tree line and all the heads of the people are looking up. I am definitely sure that we have been visited several times in antiquity by extraterrestrials. It's been 40 years since Eric Von Daniken first wrote about ancient astronauts in his book Chariots of the Gods. Since that time, authors like Zechariah Sitchin have gone to the far ends of the earth looking for clues, painstakingly piecing together enough fragmentary evidence to build a new theory of human evolution. A basic conclusion of my writings uh, has been that those who gave mankind civilization were visitors to earth from another planet. Uh, if I say extraterrestrials, it's a, 
It's a dirty word, <laughs> but that's what they wear. <laughs> this is called a kuchin. Sitchin is one of the few people on earth able to read 6,000-year-old Sumerian texts. These writings, according to Sitchin, contain unmistakable clues to ancient intergalactic space travel. And in order to come and go between them, their planet and, and our planet, they needed a space facility. The space facility was in a place in, 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 in Mesopotamia, in today's Iraq. Uh, the mission control center was at a place called Nippur, and the uh, actual spaceport was in a place called Sipar, which can be translated as bird city. Many of them were depicted as birdmen uh, with, with wings. <laughs> 